Well, hello there, guys, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to learn two new things about function. One you already know, I'm just going to name what it's called, and the other is a new thing. So, you can see I have pretty much a basic function set up over here. And what it basically does is it takes the input, prints what it took, and then changes it to x, changes it to 5, and then prints the new value. And um, I'll just compile it and quickly show you guys. So I forget to do something. Yep, and you don't need a semicolon after my definition. So I'm just going to compile it again and run it. So as you can see, a I declared a variable a equal to 10. I printed that that a equal to 10. It printed me a equal to 10. Then I call my function. So this a gets uh, it, the value of this a gets copied into x. So the x now becomes 10. So it prints x equal to 10. Then I change the value for from 10 to 5. So it now changes the value over here x equal to 5. Then prints x equal to 5 over here. And then the execution is complete. So it will go back and ex continue the execution after the function call, which means here. Then it prints again the value of a equal to 10. So what's going on over here is that I am taking this value in the function, printing that, then changing it, and then printing it. But changing the value inside the function doesn't reflect to the value I gave to the function actually. Because it still is 10 over here. And it was 10 before. It, when it, when I passed it into the function, it was 10. After the function completed, it became 5. But the original value still remained 10. So what I'm trying to say is that you cannot reflect the change in the parameter you pass to the function. By this method, you cannot. This method is called call by value, which means you are basically calling the function by the value of the variable. And there is another method called call by reference, and we achieve that by the use of pointers. And what we do is, instead of passing the value to the function, we pass the reference of the variable to the function. And pretty much in reference, we mean the address, because address is basically the reference to the variable. So we will pass over here the address of the function, or the variable to the function. But it will not work right now. And so, as you all know that we can store the addresses in the pointers. Like this. Like I declare the pointer. And then I can say that this pointer will store the address of A. I can do that. So, instead of taking a normal integer variable, we are going to take an integer pointer. And integer pointer. So what's going to happen when we call the function is now that the x will be equal to the address of a and then you know that if x is equal to address of a then the star x will be equal to a or the value a. So that's going to happen now. So the x will be equal to the address of a and star x will be equal to the value at the address of a. So inside this, we are now going to change everything to star x because that's the actual value. You'll just understand the code in a minute. And now we are going to compile it and run it. So I can help you. So you can understand it. Okay, so now you can see this. And the difference is that we printed our A after the function in both the cases. And in the first case, it remained 10. But in the next case, it changed to 5. So why? Let's just learn about that. So the change occurs over here. When we pass the address of the variable A to the function, this pointer receives that address. So over here, um, x is equal to, and a happens when we call the function. So now you know that the 
star x will actually be equal to the value at the address of the variable a. So this is what happens. So when we print star x, what are we basically printing is the value at the address pointed by x pointer. So x pointer points to the address of a and basically it points to the memory block associated to a and the memory block is associated to a stores 10 right now. So here the star x is equal to 10. So it printed me that x is equal to 10. And then here what we are doing is setting the value at address pointed by x to 5. So what are we doing over here is that we are setting the value at the address pointed by x to 5. So the address pointed by x is actually the address of the variable a. So now the changes directly occur in the memory associated to a or you can say the block of a variable in the RAM. So the value of a is basically changed over here to 5. Or you can say that instead of directly changing the variable a, we are changing the variable value at the address which a has. So we set the value at the address equal to 5 and then we print the star x so it prints us 5 now. And since we changed the value at the address of a, so the value now a which the value holds is now 5. So basically what we are trying to do is we are changing directly the address, the value at the address of some variable over here. And since we are changing directly the address, it get, reflects back to the main variable or the a variable. So hence the variable of a is changed. So this is how you can use pointers if you want to change the value of the parameter you are passing to the function. You can use a pointer then make changes to the pointer and pretty much any change you make to the pointer variable reflects back to the parameter it's pointing to. In this case it's pointing to this star point x pointer is pointing to the variable a so any change you do in the a x variable is reflected back to the a variable. So this is pretty much the pointers to the function. This is how it works. If you have any doubts, please leave it in the comment section below. It took me a while to understand what actually is when I learned for the first time. So it's okay if you don't get a hang of it. Just leave the doubts in the comment section below if you have any. And I will be happy to help you guys. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.